2015-2016 Common Council's order. Um, next, I'd like to deviate a little bit if there's no objection and ask for a moment of silence for the Make family, for the, for the fire loss and the death of the three children, Natalie 11, Carter 7, and Ben 10. Our fire department and am ambulance and, and paramedics were called to respond to this incident and uh, they did what they could, but they received commendations from Children's Hospital for their excellent, excellent work at the scene. Please stand. Thank you. Would the clerk please read the quote for today? Excuse me. It is incredible how much can be accomplished when everyone can do their jobs to the best of their ability, be respected and supported by their colleagues, and all move towards a common goal. Thank you. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. There are 11 present. Next item is approval of the minutes from our last meeting, Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, are there any resignations? No. And appointments? Nope. And moving on to public forum. Public forum, we have two this evening. The first one is um, Joel, is it John's Root? John, or Joel, would you please come up? Uh, Joel, can I have your home address, please? 2732 South 15th Street. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. All right, thank you. City officials have recently decided to reduce the staffing of the Sheboygan Fire Department by three firefighter positions as of January 1st, 2016. The reduction in firefighters will mean that the fire stations on the far north and far south sides of the city will be reduced to a minimum staffing of just two firefighters per day. This reduction in staffing will affect the services delivered by the fire department. Upon arriving at a fire, the ability of a fire truck staffed by two firefighters to mitigate any emergency becomes greatly reduced. In fact, it may even re require them to wait for the next fire truck to arrive on scene before they can effectively perform their duties. Many independent organizations have studied the effectiveness of firefighting crews, both the National Fire Protection Agency and the International City Managers Association, independent of each other, found four firefighters per truck to be the most effective and efficient. However, in working to be good stewards of the taxpayers, the Sheboygan Fire Department has worked to become efficient and effective with three firefighters while still maintaining the department's mission to protect life and property. Three firefighters arriving at fires gives us the ability to enter the building and extinguish a fire or remove a victim. Two firefighters arriving alone require them to wait for an additional fire truck before they can enter a home. Why? Because it takes one person to operate the truck and supply water and two firefighters to effectively advance a hose into a building. City leaders have not only made drastic, potentially life-threatening cuts to your fire department, but done so without researching their decision. The city's own fire chief did not recommend these cuts. No outside study or opinion has been sought by city leaders. Sheboygan Firefighters Local 43 is performing a study and will provide that to the city council and taxpayers at no cost to the city. Sheboygan Firefighters Local 43 is opposed to these cuts and any reduction in the services we provide. As we continue to gather information, we will release our findings to the public. We urge the citizens of Sheboygan to contact their older persons and ask for these positions to be filled. In 1969, the fire department was staffed with nine firefighters and covered just nine and a half square miles. Today, the Sheboygan Fire Department responds to more than 5,000 calls for service each year with 63 firefighters after the reduction of three firefighters. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Joel. Uh, next on the list is Sam Walker, and we're just going to check the mic for a second here. Chad. I'm not the IT man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, and Sam, can I have your address, please? Address would be 2735 North 31st Place in Sheboygan. Twist it a little bit. It's not coming through. Okay, you're good. Just okay. get a little closer. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll there we right. go. You'll have five minutes, Sam. Hi, my name is Sam Walker. I'm from Sunlight Books in downtown Sheboygan. We've been here for 34 years, and uh, unfortunately, we had some water damage uh, to the store uh, back in Schultz, back in so we do the do you, do you want to use, use this one? Okay. We just have to have you stand over here and be <laughs> So uh, I wanted to read a letter from Jennifer uh, Lurkey. Uh, Jennifer was a principal architect for Legacy Architecture 
who wrote to uh, Chad Palachek, the Director of Planning and Development uh, Department, and she states, uh, since Boston Store was removed, uh, Sam continued to have water problems in the basement on June or July uh, 13, 2015, the city of Sheboygan had a significant rainfall. Uh, online records indicate an event of approximately two inches. The north and west half of the basement flooded with approximately four and a half inches of water. And the water was so deep that the fire department was called to assist in removing the water before a carpet cleaning company could come in and remove the rest. The owner had to remove approximately 1,900 square feet of carpet, approximately 400 linear feet of base, uh, baseboard in the basement due to the flooding. Holes were placed in the bottom of the walls to ventilate the stud ca cavity spaces in an attempt to prevent mold growth. However, mold was identified on August 24, 2015. The gy gypsum board walls uh, furring strips and portions of the acoustic tile and drywall ceilings have subsequently been removed. Uh, she goes on to say, I have personally visited the site on several occasions. Uh, on July 28th, the weather had been very dry for the past 10 days. However, there was still water seeping into the basement. There could have only come, this could only have come from the irrigation system that was being used to water the sod in the grassy area to the north. It continues to seep in at the same location. Then Roger Miller from Miller Engineering uh, from Sheboygan visited the site on July 30th. Roger was asked to document the topograph, uh, topography in the grassy area to the north because it appeared that the new finished grade is pitched directly to the building. It took sp uh, spot elevations which showed a water flow projection uh, pointing right to the area where the water has been entering into the basement. The grassy area to the north should be regraded so that it is pitched away from the building and yard drains put in. Uh, Mike from Superior Waterproofing in Cleveland, Wisconsin, visited the site on August 13th. He also looked at the topography in the grassy area to the north and confirmed Roger's findings that the grade is pitched directly into the building. He has recommended a basement waterproofing and drainage system for the north wall of the building, which will require evacuate or excavating, waterproofing, backfill, and uh, regrading. Sunlight Books has been at this location for 34 years without any humidity or water in the basement. The Boston store structure was built up against Sunlight Books North Wall uh, and their roof drainage system took care of any water. You may remember if you entered Sunlight Books from in front of the Sunlight Books store you had to go up three steps to get into the Boston store. Uh, when you came out on the north side, there were no steps. That meant that there was an approximate 20 inch grade from our store to the north side of Boston store. So when the green space was graded to follow the 8th Street sidewalk, there was a 20 inch grade pitch right at our north wall. The north wall acted as a dam and eventually the water had to go somewhere. Unfortunately, Sunlight Books lost thousands of dollars of office equipment, office supplies, walls, carpet cabinets, and store product. We were unable to use our large meeting room for events and are re uh, relegated to conduct office business in a damp, carpetless environment where several of our staff will not eat lunch in our basement. Stan, would you room. like an extra minute? Your five minutes are up. Okay, due to the concern of That's mold. fine. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you much, Sam. Sam. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I'd like to ask uh, Daniel Brady and Dan Dana LePage to step up. Um, these two individuals were recently recognized at the last uh, 
uh, wastewater, Wisconsin Wastewater Operators Association State Convention. And um, as lead operator, Mr. Dan Brady is responsible for the efficient operation of the treatment processes at the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility, including biological uh, phosphorus removal and activated sludge treatment processes. The co-digestion and biogas production systems and the biosolids dewatering and drying processes. Mr. Brady is also responsible for guiding and training new operators and other employees and their necessary skills to operate the uh, facility and associated equipment. In addition, Mr. Brady serves as the primary lab backup and has demonstrated proficiency in all the laboratory analysis is performed at the facility. Mr. Brady has been an operator with them for 34 years. His extensive operator experience is critical not only to the facility, but to the resource recovery community as a whole. He has successfully trained and educated all the current operators in the facility who had no previous wastewater experience or technical <coughs> education. Each of these operators have in turn achieved their Wisconsin wastewater operators license and are good competent operators. Uh, a very experienced and highly respected process operations expertly recently remarked that Mr. Brady has done and continues to do an outstanding job optimizing the treatment processes. It's very exciting to see such low results and high quality affluent. I'm thinking that is he's finding a sweet spot between BioP and anaerobic digestion, the pitfalls of uh, reasonable dewatering. Mr. Brady is a great asset to the Re uh, Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility, but also to the recovery community as a whole. And he won a Lifetime Achievement Award. You may remember Dale Dorr won that award about three years ago. So we congratulate Dan in, in that citation. And also at that convention, Dana LePage was recognized as the, uh, the first year uh, Rookie of the Year program. As a laboratory technician, Mrs. Dana LePage is responsible for scheduling the sampling and analysis of all routine uh, permit requirements for the regional uh, wastewater treatment facility, all in-house lab analysis and quality control and maintaining laboratory certification. She's also diligently worked and is working upon updating and reformatting all the laboratory uh, SOPs. And after a year of serving as a lab tech for the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Facility, she had successfully prepared and, cle and cre uh, completed the DNR lab audit. We give both of these uh, individuals a hand for their great work. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, that'll include items 2.3 through 2.29. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Uh, just a point of uh, that the one item regarding uh, the um, sunlight books has been moved to uh, towards the end of agenda, so it could be a separate item. That would be item uh, 5.1. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Eleven eyes. Motion passes. Item 3.1 will be held for item 4.2. 
Um, items uh, 3.2 through 3.11 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger authorizing and advertising for bids for the King Park and Deland Park Beach Restoration Projects. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I would move to pass the resolution. This is just uh, authorizing the Public Works Department to put out a bid. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk pl please call the roll on 4.1. 11 eyes. Motion passes. 4.2 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing and entering into a contract with Spectrum Lighting Limited of Waukesha for purchase of 168 Phillips Guardco LED upgrade light kits for street lighting on Kohler Memorial Drive between North 14th Street and Taylor Drive to improve the energy efficiency. And that other item uh, came with that. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I would move to accept and file um, 3.1 and put uh, 4.2 upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 4.3 is a resolution by Alderman Heidemann, Koth, and Boren approving the amended grievance procedure HR 130 for city employees. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I put the resolution on for passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 4.4 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Moving on to section five, reports of committees. Item 5.1 is an RC by finance to whom was referred RO number 179 of 1516 by the city clerk, submitting a claim from Sam Walker of Sunlight Books for alleged damages to his property caused by the water from the green space north of the building and recommends denying the claim and to request that the city attorney send a notice of disallowance. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and adopt. Second. I thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderman Jose. Um, yeah, I'm going to vote against um, filing this and, and take, I'm going to vote against the Finance Committee's recommendation because I think um, if, if, the, if the shoe was on the other foot and the city had a building and somebody came along and, and developed the property adjacent to it and tore down a building and regraded the area and left a, a city building with water in the basement, I think we would be, um, the city would be upset with that individual. Sam has been in business for 34 years and as indicated by the letter, there was no water in that basement for 33 of those years. And only after the bought, first of all, I thought tearing down a only a 30 year old building was a terrible move, but I wasn't on the council last year when that decision was made. Um, it's led to water in his basement. And I think that um, you should do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And I think he, we should uh, certainly when when plans are redrawn, um, we should take the recommendation of the architect to prevent further water damage to his building. And I think we should be uh, paying the claim for the damage to the building. So I will be voting against um, the Finance Committee's recommendation. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? City Attorney, could you explain a little bit about disallowance and, and what this means? Disallowance simply means we're denying the claim. It doesn't 
necessarily in the process, although it puts it in Mr. Walker's uh, hands at this point. Um, we are required to act on it uh, uh, within 120 days, and, and we are within that timeline if we act on it today. Thank you very much. Alderman Koth. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to say that finance did discuss this in closed session. Uh, we discussed this at length. It was unanimous um, to disallow. So, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? See not oh, all in the bidders. In closed session, I didn't stand up. It, it, in closed session, you voted to disallow based on what? I think she's looking for the city attorney to help. Sure. Her. Yeah. Just to be clear, the vote was actually an open session. There was some discussion in closed session, and that's appropriate because there are certain matters that you know we, we need to keep in closed session as far as if there is potential litigation in the future. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the uh, denial was based on the fact that there uh, it appears to be no negligence on the part of the city uh, in order to, to pay a claim and ask the taxpayers to, to foot the bill, there would need to be some uh, negligence on the part of the city. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Walker uh, disagrees with that determination, but uh, that's uh, the investigation that was done shows no uh, negligence by the city. Thank you for that explanation. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven ayes and three noes and one abstention. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by finance to whom was referred number, a resolution number 130 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish an estimated revenue and appropriation for the 2016 Wisconsin Justice System Improvement Beat Patrol Grant solicitation and recommends that the re resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC by law and licensing. To whom is referred RO number 232 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Recommends that the beverage operator's license number 0977 be denied based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move to uh, that the report of committee be accepted. Second. And under the, uh, is there a second? I'm sorry, okay. Um, under discussion. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Uh, Eugene Osbar, are you present? Mr. Osbar has been um, called to committee several times and has not shown up. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Eleven eyes. Motion passes. 
uh, in section six ordinances, uh, items uh, 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Moving on to matters laid over, item 7.1 is General Ordinance Number 43 of 1516 by Alderman Donahue, Heideman, Warren, Hammond, and Koth, amending the supplement to the Municipal Code as to change the job description for the position of Chief Administrative Officer in the Administrative Department for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Heideman. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. I put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes. Motion passes. Next, move on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you. 8.1, uh, uh, submitting an RO from the, by the city clerk submitting a claim from NCITEL Wireless LLC for personal property taxes uh, paid in error. That would be referred to the Finance Committee. 8.2 is a resolution regarding Midwest, uh, Midwestern Disaster Area Revenue Refunding Bond Financing for Just Kids Dental SC Project. That would also be referred to the Finance Committee. 8.3 is an RO from the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016 and June 30, 2017. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next is a contemplated uh, closed session motion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19851G of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it's involved. To wit, Herman versus the City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, case number 2014, CV 000754. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a five minute recess. And for our TV viewers, we do plan to go into open session after the closed session is finished if you'd like to uh, wait a little bit.
microphone. There we go. Just a second, Mike. Appropriate funds. To settle the matter. To settle the matter of, of Herman. Herman. <laughs> Okay, we'll reconvene. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would move to um, authorize the uh, city of appropriate city officials to appropriate the $25,000 necessary and sign any legal uh, documents required to make the settlement with, uh, uh, in the case of Herman versus the city of Sheboygan. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Aye. 11 ayes. Motion passes. Alderman Hammond. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you. Chuck, do you want me to put the dollar on?